Hey everybody, this is Tom Cherry Holmes with Irata Online and the FujiNet project. With this particular test, we wanted to see what a CLI configuration program for FujiNet would actually look like. Now, who would need a CLI configuration program? Well, to be short and to the point, Sparta DOS users, DOS XL users, OSA Plus users, and XDOS users would greatly benefit from a version of the config program that could run as a CLI application under these operating systems. So we started to think about how this would actually work, and I've whipped together a first draft of such a program. Like usual, uh, many of these programs are written in C and CC65, and you can see the path for where this actually exists inside of the repo here. So if you go to ESP32, tests, multilater rev2, atari-sdx, you will find the same source code as I'm showing here in this window. It's a fairly straightforward program nicely modular and shows how you can do command line processing for Atari applications as well as basic option processing and the like. And if you'd like to, feel free to take and thumb through this particular program. We'll go ahead though and show what this program is actually going to look like. And for that, we'll go over to the Atari, boot it up, and we'll see that once we're booted up, we're actually in our existing configuration program, which is located on the flash and boot sector of the, uh, of the FujiNet itself. And the same functions that are in this program are actually in the CLI version of this program as well. To demonstrate, we'll actually have a copy of Spurtados 3.2D sitting in drive 1, and the FujiNet configuration program sitting in drive 2. All of the rest of the drive slots will be empty. We'll go ahead and hit option to boot. And once we finish booting here, we'll be sitting inside of SpartaDOS 3.2D. Since this uses any, uh, uses the standard that was set down by OSS for OSA Plus and DOS XL, it will work with a multitude of different command line DOSs which espouse this standard including Sparta DOS and Sparta DOS X and X DOS and BW DOS, etc, etc, Real DOS, etc. If we go to drive two, we will see our FNC program and it's, you know, roughly 60 sectors right now. I haven't done any squishing or optimizing. We just wanted to see how well this program would actually work. So to speed things up a bit, I'm actually going to start up a RAM disk and assign it as drive 8 for this machine. 512k RAM disk is sufficient, just fine. And we'll copy fnc.com to the RAM disk, just to speed things up and make it faster. We go to the RAM disk and we run the program. And we'll see here that if we run the program without any options, it will show us the options that it can take. Brackets indicate optional options, uh, greater than, less than, the, uh, while the angle brackets indicate mandatory options. You'll see that we have functions for setting the network, for mounting, AT, mounting and ejection uh, ATRs in device slots, for setting host names in host slots, as well as uh, listing the values in host slots, listing device slots, and listing files that are on a particular host slot. So, an example of this is to connect to the existing network that's already on the FujiNet. Now, if we were to go ahead and put in a particular SSID and password, it would immediately attempt to connect and give either an OK or no, I wasn't able to connect. But if we don't provide any of that and just keep it the options blank, it will try to connect to the, to the last network it successfully connected to. We can see right there, BAM came back almost immediately. 
And from this point on, we can start issuing out network commands. Let's start by looking and see what we have as far as our host slots. Host slots are example like a speed dial directory for TNFS servers. And if you want to access any files on TNS server, TNFS servers, you need to have something in a host slot. We'll see that we have right here, uh, fujinet.online, tnfs.atari8bit.net, and Irata online in host slots one, two, and three. Conversely, we can also look at device slots to see which disk images are mounted to a particular virtual device and how they're mounted in the first place. We can see right here that we have SpartaDOS 3.2D and FNC.ATR and that they are mounted from the same host slot, in this case 3, which is errata.online, and they're mounted read-only. We can also look at the files on a particular host slot. Once we do that, we'll get a particular uh, we'll get a particular disk directory here. At least we're supposed to, if it will let us. <laughs> Looks like we've got bugs here. Let me see if everything's still okay. Ah, uh, looks like we have a slight hiccup here. I apologize for this, folks. This software is still being put be, still in use here. Let's let's reset and try again. It looks like uh, when I did the network configuration, it reset the UDP connection that was already there, which disrupted all of the other TNFS server bindings. So that looks like it's a bug I'm going to have to fix. No big deal, I'll just remount everything on a network change. We'll go ahead and reboot. And once we come back here, we'll do the same procedure to take and start up a RAM disk and copy FNC over again. Recall that we have FNC mounted to drive 2, so we'll make a quick copy over to drive 8. This is, of course, sitting in the flash. Oh. Sorry, not sitting in the flash, but sitting on TNFS. Go back over to TN to, to FNC here, make sure we're okay. And let's try this again. Recall that listing host slots shows us the host slots that are available. Doing an LD shows the stuff that's mounted. Now, if we do an LS on slot number three, we'll see the files that are also listed there that we can take and mount. Now recall, that one of the commands that we have access to is the mount command. If we give a mount followed by a device slot, let's say device slot 3 which would correspond to D3, and mount from host slot number 3 which is errata online, and we want to mount it as read-only, Oops, sorry. Uh, FNC M33. Pay attention. We'll see that the mount has been done, and if we go to drive three here, we'll see the DOS XL disk that we just mounted. And in fact, if we. Oops, sorry. a device slot list here we will actually see and since I loaded this from drive 2 it's pulling that back so we can actually see OSA plus mounted here we can of course I'll go to the RAM disk copy here eject what's in device slot 3 and if we go back again we're going to see an error 138 because there's nothing running there anymore. There we go.
We also have the ability to take and add and remove host slots as well. Let's say we have host slot number four and we have a server on the local network that we want to have access to. We can set that host slot here and if we do a low, uh, an FNC LH at this point we will see the new host slot ready to use. It's been written to the device so it will persist across between reboots. So with that I hope this has been a, a good little demonstration here of a little CLI tool. It will improve uh, but uh, we wanted to take and do a quick sketch to see what a CLI tool like this would look like, how one would interact with it, and how well it would actually work. For demonstration, of course, I did this under Sparta DOS 3.2, but it runs under a variety of other operating systems as well. If you do try to run this under DOS 2 or my DOS, it will print an error message, pause, and then exit back to DOS. So with that, um, until next time, guys, have fun.